Okay, first up is Silent Night. This song is also a waltz tempo, and it's very slow. I'll play it a little bit faster, just so it doesn't take so long to get through it. But the real basic way to play Silent Night is to just strum like cowboy chords in the key of C, using an alternating uh, pattern where you're playing a bass note and a chord like that. You can alternate between the root of the chord That, that nice uh, loping, almost like a Hank Williams kind of cowboy ballad type of feel. So uh, here's a real easy way to play Silent Night in the key of C. As you may have seen, what I'm doing is playing the bass note on the beat, and then two chord strums, and then hitting the fifth of the chord. And then for G, hit the, the root and then the third. I'm just trying to get some kind of alternation with the bass. It doesn't have to be root fifth, it could be root third. Um, and then for the F chord, then fifth, then back to C. You can finger the C chord with both bass notes together like this, so you can just hold it. Okay, here's a different way to play Silent Night. You could play in the key of G um, using the chords G, D, G7, C. That has a nice flavor because uh, every, every chord voicing has a different character on the guitar, so um, you may prefer this version. Now here's a cool thing you can do. Uh, you can add little, what are called baseline walk-ups and walk-downs. It's kind of like a country type of feel, you know, um, but it's, it sounds nice, feels appropriate, you know, for, for a good sing-along. So you can play it like this. As you can hear, those little bass line walk-ups and walk-downs add interest to the accompaniment. Okay, here is Silent Night in the key of A. We're going to be using the chords A, D, and E, or E7, and or E7. Uh, that, they have a nice quality of their own, and uh, it may suit your preference.
Okay, you may have noticed I have uh, my capo uh, stored here on the end of the guitar. The capo is a very, very useful tool for transposing a song uh, up to a higher key, uh, usually to accommodate someone's vocal range. So let me give you an example of how you can use those different sets of chords to play Silent Night. By using the capo, you can change the key, and this way you get the best of both worlds. You get the chord voicings that appeal to you the most, and you get to play it in the range of whoever is, whoever is singing along with you. So here's a capo, say, at the third fret. I'll play it in C, as if it were in C. It's going to sound in E flat, though, because the capo transposes it up a minor third to E flat. I think you get the idea. The, the, the key is to experiment. You know, move the capo down to different positions. Start with it at the first fret and play your chords. And then move it up to the second fret. As you can see, I'm playing the same chords, G, C, D. And raising the key, so. so this way, you're, you're sure to find a key and a chord voicings that appeal to you. Now I'm going to show you how to play the melody to Silent Night in single notes over those chords, starting with the key of C. So you'll notice when I was playing the melody as single notes, I was throwing in some finger slides and a little bit of vibrato, trying to go for like a, a Willie Nelson type of vibe. Uh, you can play it straight, you know, without finger slides, and it'll sound fine. Nobody will ever fault you for playing a melody straight. Um, throwing in the finger slides makes it really expressive, you know. And uh, the more notes you play on one string and slide up and down to them, the more the prettier it sounds. Um, you also might want to think about playing a note on the G string, which is a little harder on the acoustic, it's a little tighter because it's a wound G string, you know. A little harder to get the vibrato, but... As opposed to... It's also a slightly different tone, it's a, it's a wound string. Um, so experiment with different positions. Try to play it all up and down one string. That's actually a good exercise in your training exercise is to just play a melody up and down one string. Then again, you know, too much of a good thing is too much of a good thing, so don't get carried away with the finger slides. Here's a cool thing you might want to try, and that's to use tremolo picking to play the melody. Tremolo picking is fast alternate picking on the same note. You're re-articulating re the same note. And what that does is it emulates the long sustained tones of a woodwind instrument or a voice or a string instrument such as a violin. And it's very expressive to play a slow melody like this and to keep the note going. So here's an example. Uh, I'll play Silent Night again in the key of C and I'll do the, the two guitar arrangement. And I'll use tremolo picking to play the melody. And you hear how the note kind of stays at the same level because I'm, I'm re-articulating it.
when tremolo picking, you may find it helpful to, to rest uh, your pinky and ring finger on the pick guard as you pick. It's like a little tentacle that kind of gives you a point of reference uh, as you move your hand back and forth. As opposed to having the hand just picking freely in the air. Then again, that might work for you too. So experiment with different picking postures and you know, having the hand like this or the fingers curled in or whatever works for you. Here's another approach you may want to take. Instead of strumming, uh, finger pick the chords, uh, arpeggiate them. That actually sounds more like the traditional accompaniment that you hear on, on records and you know, in songbooks. And it's actually appropriate for the very slow tempo that the song is actually played at. So here's Silent Night. I'll give you an example, but playing it in C using these same chords, C, G, and F. But I'll, I'll arpeggiate the notes of each chord with my fingers. So the idea is to pick out the notes of the chord in ascending order, get a pattern going, and then kind of apply it to each chord. One thing you may find helpful uh, is to, again, anchor the pinky to the pick guard, as we did with, when tremolo picking with the, with the flat pick. Uh, it was, it's debatable whether that is proper technique or not, but you may find it very helpful to just rest the pinky there while your hand is finger picking the strings, as opposed to having the hand floating in the air over the strings. Here's a nice solo arrangement of Silent Night that includes the melody. So it sounds very satisfying without anybody even singing it. Sometimes you don't want to sing or you don't feel like singing, you just feel like playing instrumentally. So here it goes. For those of you who are a little more harmonically adventurous, here's a variation on that arrangement I just played of Silent Night that throws in some extra passing chords and even does a little bit of reharmonization here and there. You may find this appealing. The big difference in this version is when it comes to this part, instead of going
it adds a, a nice little uh, uh, cadence that uses some borrowed harmony and secondary dominant harmony and whatnot. Um, so it goes. It's a nice touch, uh, a two dominant nine chord thrown in there, and then back to the. Now here's a different approach altogether to playing Silent Night. This is uh, what's known as chord melody style, where you're strum just strumming chords and playing the melody note on top. What I did here is just follow the melody in terms of the rhythm, but then added a couple of little just to kind of fill out the rhythm whenever the melody note would stay, you know, would stay on a note for a while. Those little notes that you add kind of fill in the, the harmony and the rhythm as well. So it makes it sound complete and satisfying.